Hey guys, this is Lawrence of the Ketones and Coffee Podcast. Make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any of this great content. I'm so excited for this, guys. Stick around because our guest today is a certified keto and carnivore coach with her mission to educate, support, and encourage others to achieve their goals using a ketogenic and carnivore lifestyle approaches. I'm so excited for this. I'm here with Nancy Rothwell. Nancy, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. I'm I'm honored as well because I am just grateful to have you on today to share your story. And uh, we got a lot to discuss here today. And every time we can speak to, you know, somebody that turned it around is uh is always a treat for our listeners here. So thank you for, for coming on. Thank you. And I also want to point out, Nancy, you know, the change in lifestyle um at any point of our lives has always proven to be difficult it's uh it's, it can be a sip, simple change you really all know that but it can it's uh it's always it's not an easy change i wouldn't say yeah. um and we will get to your story here in a little bit and what we understand now is that people you know when we get stuck in a place um where we become lost right and we often don't hear anything and create change it has to come from us, right? We ourselves has to want change because sometimes we do hear about, you know, these different diets, but to be able to, for us to come from us and to desire the change is a different story. Um, so I'm just happy that you're here. Um, we are, uh, we're here to empower people about our stories here and to change their lives like we did. Um, and Nancy here has done that. Having said that, I'd like to learn about your story a little bit more, uh, leading to you know your transformation. And let's get to your background here. I understand that you had dabbled in different diets early on in your life, and you can get into the goals and results on these diets. And then through that whole process, which was you know a journey in itself, before we um, come across keto here, deciding to switch to keto and at the core, what was the relationship with uh, food like for you before? Yep. So I've struggled with my weight. I remember feeling fat when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. I remember going out to buy an Easter outfit and I felt like I had all this fat around my abdomen um, at, at the age of eight. So that's my first recollection of, you know, like, when did I actually feel fat? I mean, I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sometime in junior high, and I can't pinpoint the exact time. Um, but I started, I started purging. Mm -hmm. um, I got to the point where I thought, okay, if I, I love to eat. Um, and so instead of gaining weight, I just figured I could binge and purge and not gain any weight. So throughout junior high and high school, I battled with an eating disorder, bulimia. Mm -hmm. Um, at the age of 16, a friend of mine was going to Weight Watchers and, um, mm -hmm. You know, I said, maybe I should join you because I've always felt like I've had a weight issue and maybe that could be an answer to, you know, my questions. Um, so I went to Weight Watchers with her, but I continued to binge and purge. Mm. And so um, it what you know, a, a life situation got actually it was my sister who embarrassed me in front of my husband, now husband, um, we had my my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband, um, and I went out for a really nice meal. And, you know, I had hid my my bulimia as much as I could from my family. But, you know, when you ate and went into the bathroom, you know, you can hear what happens. And my sister definitely knew that I was bulimic. And so she said to me when we got home from dinner, she said, you know, did you throw up? that mm. beautiful meal that he just provided for you and literally embarrassed, um, embarrassed mm. me. And so I, it kind of led me to say, you know what, I need to, I need to be done with this. And I literally just decided on my own without any intervention yeah. that I was going to be done because I was literally mm. humiliated. Mm. And so, um, then I had to get where, you know, how do I, I not eat as much as I was eating because, you know, it was great to eat what I wanted to. And, and then I could binge and then I wouldn't worry about gaining weight. And, um, 
So I started exercising and I, you know, I started like, okay, I'm going to go to Weight Watchers and see if I can get help. And that led to, you know, years worth, years worth of different diets. Um, Mm. And I was successful. I'm actually a two time Weight Watcher lifetime member. Mm. You know, it's not like I don't have success losing weight. It's like, well, how do I keep keep it off? You know, losing Mm. weight is easy. It's the keeping it off. That's difficult. Mm. Um, So fast forward to 2006. um, I got to a point where I couldn't walk. And so my husband carried me to the chiropractor and the chiropractor told me to go to the doctor and I found out I had Lyme disease. And so um, my doctor basically told me that it had progressed so far that by the age of 50, which was 10 years from that time, I would be in a wheelchair. Um, And so I spent a lot of years trying to find, you know, an answer Mm -hmm. to heal my body of this horrific disease. Mm -hmm. And I did supplement after supplement after supplement. And in, well, about seven years ago, I met a woman who, um, say, I mean, saved my life. She told me, and I was telling her about my struggles and with Lyme disease and weight. And she said, have you ever considered living a ketogenic lifestyle? And I'm like, what does that mean? And she said, just go online and start researching. And I said, can't you just tell me what to do? Because, I mean, I'm not a good researcher. I'm a visual learner. So can you just tell me, tell me what to do? I'll do it. Um, I mean, if you would tell me to hang upside down naked on the busiest street in the world for two hours every day because it was going to heal my Lyme disease, I would have done it. Yeah. And he said, just research. And so I did. And and I spent hours and hours and hours of research. And what I found is there wasn't one perfect way to do the ketogenic lifestyle. Mm. Um, There were a lot of varying beliefs and it was it got to the point where it was so confusing Mm -hmm. um and a friend of mine i was telling her you know i'm researching the ketogenic lifestyle and she said oh you should follow my friend maria she has a facebook Mm -hmm. um post and i or a facebook group and i'm like oh yeah she's probably like all the other you know keto people i follow and so i just thought i'm gonna meet her you know i'm gonna follow her and then i found out she was from wisconsin which is from the state i that's the state I live in. And she was actually going to be in her hometown, which wasn't far from me. And so I went to meet her and I fell in love with her. She, I loved her thought process. I loved her program. I just, how she presented the ketogenic lifestyle just made sense Mm. to me. And she transformed my world. And when I got serious and did keto the way she told me to, I had humongous success. Mm -hmm. And um, people saw that, you know, and people had watched me all my life up and down with weight up and down with weight, you know, Mm -hmm. Oh, what, what diet is she on now? Well, how long should she keep it up? When's her weight going to come back on? I'm sure that's what people were saying. And it was the first time that I actually lost weight. Um, And I actually lost 60 pounds. And I didn't really get into this lifestyle for weight loss. I got into it because my body was battling a horrific disease called Lyme Mm, disease and I wanted to heal it. And for the first time, somebody said, you know, maybe what you're putting in your body, what you're actually physically eating is making a difference. And that made no sense to me. Like, Mm -hmm. isn't there some magic pill I can take? And there's some magic, you know, like, why would Mm -hmm. what I eat make any difference? Mm -hmm. Um, And the one thing is Maria Emmerich's, um, husband is bat battles Lyme disease just yeah. like I do. And so mm-hmm. it just, it made sense. And I, for the first time, it was like, somebody knows what I'm battling because mm-hmm. they've been there and done that themselves. Mm-hmm. And so I had so much success that I um, decided to become certified under their program. And so three and a half years ago, I plunged into being a certified keto and carnivore coach. Um, it's been an incredible ride. It's as a coach to watch the clients that I'm yeah. working with have incredible success um, and heal their bodies from years and years and years of damage mm-hmm. is just an honor. And so I've I've helped other people with eating disorders. Um, I've helped people get off of 
you know, high blood pressure medications. One of my clients actually, when I started coaching her was on three high blood pressure medications. Um, I've, I've had clients, you know, not be type two diabetics anymore. Mm. They've totally been able to get off of all their medication. And so that just exactly by learning what to eat. Mm. And, um, it is absolutely amazing. I love it. I love it. And every step of the way, every milestone, let's call it milestone in your life, I think plays a role in you discovering and now sharing with people because it now helped you get, you got to a point where you were, you said you were willing to do everything that you could, meaning you're at a point of desperation. Absolutely. And you have to be, sometimes you have to be at that point before you were able to absorb this information because otherwise you would easily brush this off. Um, like, you know, it's so hard to explain, you know, keto to people because of how, you know, unconventional it is. And there's a lot of uh, variables and, you know, the, there's a lot of unlearning and now education. And before you get to that point, this is why keto is um, so powerful is when you do make a, a switch, it is an instant, um, you know, light bulb that comes up. And right now you said you, it helped you with you, it helped with the eating disorder, with the Lyme disease, you met somebody. And I, I believe that, you know, you come across people because you are, you know, you know, researching more and more about this and people um, gravitate to you and now you're coaching. This is amazing. Um, I want to get back to um, when you were uh, younger, get back to that. Um, I believe that plays a role here. And I want to get to help people to find this way of eating as well by understanding how we also find this, right? Um, I can relate somehow with what you, not in the same degree, but when I was in elementary school, I remember always, you know, getting picked last on everything right. and i remember being called names i was a chubby kid and growing up and because of that in hindsight now looking back uh, my insecurities started at that back then when just always wanting to look lean because people might make fun and i wasn't saying it to myself at the time but my action certainly was uh, an obvious indication of that so no matter how much I tried to hide my insecurities, it still came out um, from my behaviors. And I also, you know, thank, thank, you know, all those experiences because it made me aware of what people are going through now. Um, and that's, I think, I believe is how you were able to now help people with eating disorder because of your experience with that, with Lyme disease, because of your experience with that. And now you are able to help those people reverse those conditions because of what you were able to experience. And for me, I thank those experiences. It might have been um, hard at the time, but looking back, it was hard. But now it's definitely helping us help other people as well. Because with eating disorders, I believe that people are ashamed of that. And they tend to hide that uh, from you know their families. So like if you look at people who has that it wouldn't be a as accurate because people some people are hiding it they're not recording and they're not you know un unless it's you know it's at the point where you know they get to a place where it cannot be handled anymore by themselves so um i read your full story on your website uh, ketojourneycoaching.com and you said practitioner told you that you were obese the fact that you know all these years that you remember that it must have been a significant turning point of your life how did that moment change you hey ketones crew if you want to work with me i just released my one-on-one -on -one 60 minute consultation where we will take a deeper dive into your health journey and formulate a plan where you can incorporate the ketogenic diet to fit your lifestyle. If you're interested, take control of your health today. 
click the link on the description box below and let's get started. Hey guys, let me tell you about this delivery service that's been a total game changer for my lifestyle. Did you know that it's now possible to get local fresh groceries delivered right at your doorstep? Well, Instacart gives you unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. And if I can avoid buying non-keto friendly items from supermarkets who psychs you into buying unhealthy foods, plus if it saves me a lot of time and money, sign me up. Instacart is hand-selected by shoppers based on your preferences so no more rock-hard avocados and they will keep your eggs safe too. And Instacart will find everything you usually buy and get smart suggestions for new items. And you can get your first order today delivered for free when you purchase over $35 by following the link on the show notes below to let Instacart know that I sent you and to help to support the show. Instacart, never step foot in the grocery store again. Well, it, you know, I, re I remember when I was in junior high, my, my principal actually gave everybody in the class a name. Mm -hmm. And the name that he gave me was Moose. Mm -hmm. And so for a long period, period, you know, like, I was struggling with my weight already. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, and I never really went to him and said, you know, what do you, what are your thoughts with calling me this name? I just I figured, well, he's calling me what I feel like. I feel like a moose. And so it made sense to me. Mm -hmm. But one day I was working in the office just helping out. And I was doing some work for him. And he he said, you know, in talking, he said, is there anything else I can help you with? And I said, actually, yeah, there is. And so I approached him. And I, I mean, as difficult as it was for me to do that, I thought, I just, it's really, it's bothered me for a period of time. You know, like, why? Why would you call me Moose? Because that's just, mm -hmm. it's just not a nice name. Yeah. And so I asked him, I approached him and I said, you know, I, I'm curious why this is the name that you gave me. And he said, Nancy, when a moose wants something, nothing is going to stand in their way. And that's how you are. Mm. And I was like, Wow. That's not what I thought you mm -hmm. meant by calling me Moose. You know, so for this long period of time, here my principal was calling me this name. And mm -hmm. I was thinking he was calling me it because he thought I was fat. Yeah. And I felt fat. So, it, I mean, it was appropriate, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. You know, I thought that's kind of a mean name to give a girl, mm -hmm. you know, in junior high school. And, um, but that comment and you know, what he meant by that has served me well in my life because I have, you know, not much gets in my way. So, you know, I am kind of like, that. I mean, it really, he knew what he was talking about because, um, you know, when I, when I set my mind on something, not much will stand in my way. And mm. so it has, despite not yeah. thinking it would ever serve me, it has actually quite served mm. me quite well. That's a pretty good trait to have actually. Yes. It's uh, so it's something that is very valuable when it in terms of like just you know getting through because you've gotten through a lot of things here. Um, you talked about just you know the awareness at your age of you know wanting to lose weight is is something to be behold because at that at that time you you wanted to do something. It's just that you didn't know what to do. Right. And you 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 always had that thought, and when you got a chance to do it learning about you know how to eat the, the right way you you jumped into the opportunity to do it and having that trait helped you a lot here and you know just having to turn your life around like this um you know with eating disorder lime um and then you know just it this is hard to to because with the eating disorder now it's i, I want to ask you how long was that process for you um, you know, that point where you, your sister told on you, um, to actually, you know, turning it around. Cause that's, uh, eating disorders are, you know, hard to understand and it's, m maybe you can, uh, speak on it more, um, uh, from your experience. Right. So, uh, well, 
one thing we haven't discussed, and you probably don't know this because it's not on my website, but um, at the age of 17, I went to treatment for alcoholism. Mm. I had ended up um, in the in detox on my graduation night. And so um, they basically told me, you have, you know, you can go home, but you have to sign up for treatment. So a week after I graduated high school, I went to treatment. And so throughout even treatment, I was actively bulimic. Um, but I learned the tools necessary through that process to use with my eating disorder. And so you talk about things happening for a reason. Well, things do happen for a reason. Um, and I truly believe that going to treatment saved my life because not only have I been able to, you know, get away from using alcohol, but I, I was also able to use those tools that I learned to, you know, keep from continuing on with my bulimic lifestyle. Mm, yeah, I understand that, you know, habits are very hard to break free from. And you probably know this from experience also and coaching clients as well. It's, uh, it's uh, deeply uh, embedded into our beliefs into our habits and sometimes we don't know where it's coming from we would want to reach out for food um, because of that feeling and sometimes that feeling is so strong and at that moment it is hard to stay consistent because of how deeply embedded those feelings are and getting to go back to you know understanding what why it's happening like you said you you went back to when you were eight years old i feel like we all have to do that go back to our roots go back to that for me and the insecure kid that i was back then is understanding why these feelings are coming up because some people don't understand why they're overeating why right they're unconsciously <laughs> eating it's just became a habit and to break that habit, you have to understand those emotions. And, you know, for us, what helped us, I believe, is we going back to those emotions, those strong, very strong emotions, and just asking, why do you feel this way? Okay, why did you, um, why are you overeating, first of all? And then go, go a layer above that. Why, why do you feel this way? Why are you feeling whenever you're triggered, you're overeating? Uh, why are you getting triggered by those uh, uh, by those situations? And just you go go down the list, and you'll understand that it's something that happened from the past that's not serving you anymore. Exactly, I, I, I believe. Um, Amen to that. <laughs> so Amen. you know, if anyone's listening, you know, uh, I believe that you know you have to. If you're overeating in that moment, there's it's not something that you did today. It's something that happened from you. Somebody said to you or somebody happened in the past that that's still um, you're that's still not being uncovered. You have to do that first before we can make a change here. Um, so I want to get to talk about Lyme disease. I think this is very important um, for some, maybe someone listening that uh, found this recording because of that, because may, they may have Lyme disease. And I want to talk about that more. And there might be, um, you know, some misunderstanding about that. And um, I'm, I believe there's medicine has, does medicine have, uh, uh, can medicine have to do anything about that? Or is there a fact that, you know, being on a ketogenic diet is, is the way to go? Is What's the medicine? Were you taking medicine at the time when you got? Uh, yeah. So when I was, you know, I went to the chiropractor, my husband carried me into the chiropractor. Um, I had been feeling super tired. And I, I also do professional organizing. I've had a um, professional organizing business um, for 20 years, actually. So at the time, I was super busy. It was right before the holidays. Um, it was actually at Thanksgiving time. And so people are, you know, getting their houses cleaned up and organized because companies coming. And so I was doing a lot of organizing. Plus, I hosted Thanksgiving at my home. And so my husband's family and my family would come to our, our home. And I would 
pretty much prepare everything because I just wanted everybody to come and be together, but I didn't want anyone to go to the work of, you know, preparing things. So I was doing tons of organizing, doing a lot of cooking. And, you know, I remember sitting down after the meal was over and my mother-in-law looked at me and she said, wow, are you okay? You look really tired. And I thought to myself, I could, I mean, I could just die right now. And I think I'd feel better because I really was, I was just so exhausted. And the few weeks leading up to Thanksgiving, I remember working with different organizing clients and if they would leave the room to go somewhere, I would literally sit down and I I would say to myself, like, how am I going to make it through the day? And I never thought like something's wrong with me. I mean, I've always had, you know, fairly decent energy and um, I'm, you know, like the energizer buddy, bunny, but I just attributed it to being busy. And, you know, I was seeing the chiropractor because my, my body just was hurting everywhere. And he was getting frustrated because I kept going and it was like, I wasn't getting better, which typically is not the case. You know, if I, because of the organizing, you know, and the physicalness of that, I would go to the chiropractor fairly frequently. And so just keep to keep my body healthy. And I, I, I've always been a supplement person, so I'm not a huge medical, like go to the doctor Mm -hmm. for whatever. I've always, you know, been, give me a supplement. Um, I mean, I never really watched my diet because nobody ever suggested that would be you know, a way to do things. So I did a lot of supplements. And um, the day that I went in there, he basically just told my husband, you need to take her in. She has Lyme disease. And I'm grateful that the doctor who was at urgent care knew my chiropractor and trusted his judgment um, because my test did not come back positive. And he said, you know, I am still going to treat you because I had, you know, I had all but maybe two symptoms of Lyme disease. Uh, you know, there were, he went over the list and it was like, yes, 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 yes. With the exception of a couple. And I don't remember what they were. I had all of them. And he said, I'm still going to treat you. And, um, I'm not waiting for a positive test, which. So I'm, there are people that are not being treated. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. I mean, there, you know, you wonder how often people are, are being misdiagnosed or not mm. diagnosed. I mean, my test never came back positive. How long did I have it in my body? I mean, people have body for a long time and not know. I don't have any idea. I do know I helped my husband pull a deer out of the woods the beginning of the month. But to go from, you know, getting bit to not being able to walk within a month, I don't know that that's the tick that actually gave me the Lyme disease. And so, and I have found since that I also have, um, two other tick-borne diseases, urliculosis and babesia. So the tick that bit me didn't just have Lyme disease. It had two other tick-borne diseases. So, mm. you know, I'm sure that has played a part into my um, mm. battles as yeah. well. So, you know, I, within a short period of time, so I did, I to, I said to my chiropractor, can I take supplements for this? And he said, absolutely not. You have you have to go on, on an antibiotic and typically that would be doxycycline. So that's exactly what they, they almost always, I've never heard of the doctors treating with anything else. So Mm. within a short period of time, I felt incredible. Like, I don't want to say overnight, but within a short period of time, Mm. I started feeling well. And the doctor that I saw at urgent care said, you know, go on the antibiotic and see how you do. If you if your symptoms come back after you quit taking it, then you need to let me know because then you need more. And that's exactly what happened. So within a couple of days of being done with my initial dose wow. of recycling, my I had I had to call him back and say I I'm having all my symptoms back again. And so I went I was actually on two different rounds um mm of antibiotics for the Lyme disease. And um, yeah. So this is the only treatment for this antibiotics? Well, it depends on who you talk to. And Mm -hmm. that's where we struggle in this world is there's so many schools of thought on how to treat Lyme disease. And so, yeah, I I mean, there's no pat answer, you know, like with certain diseases, there's like a pat answer with Lyme disease. 
there's just not a pat answer. And, and some people get Lyme disease and take doxycycline and never have a problem. And other people, you know, could you, you know, there's things called co-infections and, you know, could you get, could you have gotten bit by another tick? Could you get Lyme disease more than mm-hmm. one? Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of factors. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Antibiotics just scares me. <laughs> yeah, right. Because of uh, how, what, how it affects your, your microbiome and how it destroys your gut bacteria. Right. And, um, you know, my, my mom, she, she's, she was taking antibiotics before for something else and, you know, destroyed her, uh, her ability to digest uh, certain foods, which would, you know, actually making things worse because it's, uh, my, my concern is if you had gone that route of, you know, upping the dose and also people struggling with that too, being given antibiotics because they're not, how, how, what, what's the expectation there? How long are you expected to take these uh, antibiotics until it went away? Well, so they, I can't, you know, this happened, you know, in 2006. So it's so many years ago and I don't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. How many, you know, it was so many weeks the first time and it was so many weeks the second time. And basically he told me the same thing. He said, you know, if your symptoms come back, start coming back. after you finish mm-hmm. this, the second dose, then contact me again. And they, they didn't come back right away, okay. you know? Um, but then there were times in my life and then I was, you know, I, I was seeing a doctor, um, she's a doctor of natural medicine. And at the time, even before I got Lyme disease, I would go to her for various things. I, you know, I've battled um, allergies. I've battled, you know, I we have varicose veins in our family. You know, there's just different things, migraine headaches. Um, you know, I was having some issues and being a professional organizer and being in people's, um, you know, dirty spaces. You know, what what is my body? What am I getting into? What am I breathing? What am I touching? And so it's always, you know, I've always um, wanted to try to clear my body of, of stuff that, um, you know, that I'm getting into. And so I saw a doctor of natural medicine, so I was already doing supplements. I totally understood that. And so I went to her after I finished my doxycycline and, and I said, you know, what can I do? And she, she gave me some different supplements that I could take to help me, Mm. you know, maintain, um, my health, you know, because my body had just suffered a horrific disease. That's the scary stuff to get into. I, I would say for anyone that's listening, antibiotics should be your, the last thing in your mind. If you have, if you have, you know, there's plenty of information there. I, you know, like you said, but there's a lot of uh, too much information. But I, I believe that if you look at the sources and maybe, you know, look at people you know what, look at people that had great success with, you know, reversing the condition, like uh, Nancy here, and don't, antibiotics should be the last thing on your mind, you know, for whatever reason, right? If, you know, if uh, maybe in the moment when, when you're, when the pain, just to, but plan to get off of it, I believe, like, I don't, I don't like antibiotics. Well, and the minute I was diagnosed, I mean, I asked my chiropractor, can I do this? Because he's, yeah. he's very much anti-medication. And, and he told me no. And I went to my doctor of natural medicine and I said, can I treat this Lyme disease without taking an antibiotic? And she said, absolutely not. So now, you know, so yeah. on advice of two people that I, you know, yeah. adored and trusted, I took the antibiotic and it mm-hmm. helped. I mean, after the second dose. Yeah. Um, do they have different, you know, modalities yeah. now? I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, can you heal your Lyme disease without antibiotics? I mean, I wish I had the answer to that. But yeah. I do know that I have been able to continue healing my body through the use of a ketogenic okay. lifestyle. I, you know, um, I just turned 56. My doctor told me that I'd be in a wheelchair at the age of 40. And I scaled the highest mountain in Arizona last year. Mm. Um so I don't take my health for granted, but I also have to watch everything I eat. And mm. so my body 
doesn't like a lot of things that, yeah. you know, that it shouldn't eat anyway, you know, carbohydrates and sugar. And I mean, my body loves keto, my body yeah. loves carnivore. And so I'm going to keep eating this way because I've been able to heal my body, help heal my body by, you know, just choosing the right foods. It's been awesome. Mm. And to that point, I, I was talking to uh, an endurance athlete yesterday, and he told me about the story of um, uh, uh, a man in his 50s went keto, um, was beating everyone on the track. And he used to have, he, he used to, you know, be in a wheelchair too. Wow. So it was an amazing uh, story um, when, he, when he started the ketogenic diet, a well-formulated ketogenic diet. Right. Yes. Uh, got and up and uh, beat everyone on the track. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's uh, incredible how this way of eating uh, can relieve a lot of uh, pains, right? And this is just what it is. We, this is why we're doing this. I personally can't just stay silent about this because of how it helped my life and you know absolutely helped yours too absolutely and i love that and um i i saw an interview of you with maria you see, are you what's your diet like now are you carnivore now well i mm -hmm. i have a tendency to stay more carnivore than i do keto mm -hmm. um just because the less carbohydrates I eat, the better my body feels. Mm. And so, you know, through, and I've been eating, you know, a ketogenic lifestyle almost seven years now. And I, I have learned what my body does mm. and what my body does not like. And mm. so, um, yeah. I have to be pretty strict, um, because my body yells at me when I'm not. <laughs> and so, you know, yeah. and I, Oh, I'm okay with that. I mean, the majority yeah. of the stuff that I'm, you know, ice cream or a cupcake or something once in a while, I'm like, oh, I'm going to, you know, and I have found a little bit of sugar causes a lot of anxiety in my body, mm. you know, which I never yeah. knew before. Yeah. So yeah. I just don't, I don't want to feel anxious. And mm. so I don't put sugar in my yeah. body and my body loves me for it. So, yeah. you know, just learning over time. I mean, we become smart, you know, when our body says something to us, when we eat something in particular, it's like, do you want to continue to feel this way? Or maybe you shouldn't put that in your body because when you don't, you feel amazing. Mm -hmm. And I do, I feel, I truly, truly never thought I could feel this wonderful. I love that. And, you know, I would go back and forth in carnivore when my back starts to, <laughs> to hurt because I, I had I had an injury uh, from playing sports, and when I started keto, it did relieve some pain. But when I went carnivore for a week before it went, it, it was gone. Like it disappeared right. one day. Yep. Like how? That's magic. <laughs> <I don't>, that <laughs> that's magic. Um, I don't know. Like I've been going to the chiropractor for years. Couldn't help me. I went carnivore for a week gone right so it's, am it's amazing. amazing it's amazing how it works it's amazing how it works i don't know if it's the junk that you stop eating or is it the maybe it's the combination of both right how right. nutrient dense uh beef is you know when i'm eating beef i feel like i'm taking in supplements right right you it's are just, yeah yep. and now well, we and yeah, i think go ahead you know, the majority of people want a magic pill. You know, I want a magic pill. I want a magic shake. I want a magic patch. I want a magic whatever. Um, you know, learning a new lifestyle, like ch changing the way I eat. Oh, I don't want, I, I'm not interested in that. You yeah. know, I, I'm more interested in the easy way. It's intimidating. It, it is. Yeah. Well, and it's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn, you know, and, yeah. um, and the coaching program that I have is very extensive because it, you can't learn it overnight and it's not, it's yes. not an overnight process. It's a learning process. Yes. So it's changing, 
you know, it's changing a lifestyle. It's changing a life, just the way you've lived life forever. Yeah. Um, it's a process and it doesn't happen overnight. Yes. And we, you know, we all want results overnight. We all want change overnight. And why? Because we have a lifetime. We have a lifetime of undoing. Yeah. And absolutely. Um, you can't undo a lifetime of stuff overnight. Mm, absolutely. I, I like your point there when you said there's a lot of learning here. And I want to add on to that because for keto, I believe there's a lot of education, like you mentioned. And for us to learn, I read a book from, um, it's called Limitless by Jim Quick. I want to share this real quick for people. If you are somebody who wants or struggles to you know, absorb the information, um, he said you have to do two things to be able to learn something new. And an example that he used there is when children, you know, um, learns quicker than adults is because they have a beginner's mind. Meaning, if you have somebody has the beginner's mind, they're unassuming of a subject. Right. So the two things that you have to do to be able to have a beginner's mind is to forget what you assume about the subject or a topic for a second, just suspend those thoughts for a second. That's number one. Forget whatever you thought was uh, keto was. Forget you know what you saw from TikTok what, of what keto is. Um, it's for you to be able to absorb the information. Number two, you have to forget your limitations. Meaning, if you have, if you thought you cannot be disciplined, it's as simple as that. Everything you tell yourself when you're fa you, when you fail a diet, forget what you tell yourself. Sometimes we tell ourselves we we just can't lose the weight. Forget those limitations for a second. Forget forget what you thought you knew about the subject or a topic like keto or an end. And then number two is forget your limitations. That's how you learn. I That's love a, Yeah. It's so true, you know. Um, and I coach people who know a lot about the ketogenic lifestyle. And I coach people who don't know anything about the ketogenic mm -hmm lifestyle. And it's so much easier to coach somebody who doesn't because I don't have to unlearn, you know, and there's a lot of misconceptions about what the ketogenic lifestyle is, um, and what it does and that it's not sustainable. You can only, you know, and it's, mm. it is sustainable. I mean, yeah. Craig and Maria Emmerich, who I did my certification under have been coaching and eating keto for 25 plus years. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're, you know, they're so healthy. And mm -hmm. so, and I've been doing it for seven years. I mean, the first time in my life where I lost weight and I've kept it off, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's a lifestyle and it's, mm -hmm. it's been so incredible. And I never thought I would ever be mm -hmm. where I'm at today. And yeah. so I'm forever grateful yeah. that I Abs found a way. Of absolutely. Living. Absolutely. That's why I, I want to tell people here is don't dread with your, where you are right now. If you're somebody who's struggling with weight, don't dread where you are right now. Right. It's, it's going to help you, you know, figure out once you did, once you do figure out and you will, then you're going to be able to help people who are struggling like you did. Um, and you'll be able to share your, these information so, you know, they can also do the same for themselves. Um, I want to ask you, sharing your story here, what was the motivation for sharing your story and, you know, becoming a coach? Well, it's called hope, H O P E hope. Love it. Um, the day that my friend Mary told me about the ketogenic lifestyle, she gave me hope that there was a better way mm. and, um, gave me hope that by learning something new that I could heal my body from this dreaded disease. Mm -hmm. Um, and anytime I've been offered hope, I've taken a hold of it and ran because, oftentimes in life, nobody gives us hope, you know, it's like, oh, you're hopeless. Yeah. You know, there's, and you know, you hear of people, there's no hope for you. You know, you, you're a hopeless cause, whatever, yeah. whatever. Uh, we're not hopeless. None of us are hopeless. And so if you want to change and you want your life to be different, there's people who can encourage and support you to mm -hmm. get you where you're at. And so I have not gotten where I am today on my own. You know, I have, I have wanted to change and be better. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day I wake up, I want to be better today than I was yesterday. I want to be better tomorrow than I am today. 
And so I have learned who I have found people to help me get better at whatever it is that I need to get better at. And so I haven't done it on my own. I have, I have invited people into my world um, who have given me hope and said, you know, I can help you to the better way. Um, and I'm grateful for all those people because it's been mm -hmm. several people who have yeah. helped me with lots of things in my mm -hmm. life to get mm -hmm. me to where I am today. And so it was hope. It was hope mm -hmm. that if I changed the way I did things that mm -hmm. I, I could yeah. be different. And I'm so grateful she shared that with me. And it all started when you wanted to make a change. You did say you are ready to make a change by saying, I will do anything. And yes, I had got to mm -hmm. a point where I was so, I was sick and tired of being mm -hmm. sick and tired. I yeah. was just, I was absolutely exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, I had so much pain. I felt like I was at the end of my rope. I mean, I, you know, if I could have just laid down and died, I would have, that would have been my choice. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of pain from the Lyme disease and, um, and I actually had relapsed in my alcoholism at the time when I found the ketogenic lifestyle. Um, I had, I had appeared as the, um, professional organizer on a T on the TLC hoarding buried alive show. Mm -hmm. And through that process, I found alcohol was helping me with the pain that I was suffering from my Lyme disease. And so I started drinking again. Mm. And when I found the ketogenic lifestyle and started eating keto, it really didn't work for me. Um, it wasn't until I got sober, which was shortly after I found keto, that I was having success because in our bodies, alcohol is a fuel source. And truly, a ketogenic lifestyle is all about using fat as your energy source. And so if, you know, consuming alcohol and trying to eat keto doesn't work. Because alcohol yeah. trumps any other fuel source. And mm -hmm. so once I got sober and I was eating keto, I had huge mm -hmm. success. And literally, my weight started falling mm -hmm. off. And it was, it, it happened very quickly. I would run into people and they would be like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and well, it's called I'm eating keto, but I also gave up alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so, and I have, I've never felt better than I do mm -hmm. today. And so... Love it. So grateful. Love it. And I believe you wouldn't do, you wouldn't, you know, change anything. No, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. You nope. wouldn't change anything because nope. every, every little thing will help somebody else out there that's oh, uh, also struggling every, with the same thing. Our pain, mm -hmm. my pain throughout my life has become my passion. And mm -hmm. so the pain that I've been, you know, if I wasn't enduring. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story here. I would love my listeners to be able to find you here, Coach. Uh, where can they find you? So you can go on my website, which is ketojourneycoaching.com. Um, I also have a Facebook page, Keto Journey Coaching. Um, yeah, so those two places. Um, Absolutely. I'd to, yeah, I'd be honored to help anyone in any way that I can. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I hope you guys picked up. Uh, there's a lot here. <laughs> um, I will re-listen to this and take notes. And if you are interested with coaching, the links will be down in the description box below. So you guys can check that out. And again, thank you so much. Uh, thank Nancy, you for coming on and sharing your story. Such a pleasure to spend time with you. Thank you. Same. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.